Hi everyone, it's Paul here. This is the video for the saddest day of the week, it has to be said, for day four, the final day of the 2019 Cheltenham Festival. Uh, I'm recording this actually now on Thursday, about an hour before uh, the off for the first race on the Thursday, but I won't be uploading this until tonight because it takes a long time to get through on my Wi-Fi. But uh, fingers crossed we get some more winners today, day three. We had a cracking day two yesterday, banged in the last four. Um, and a 25 to 1 place as well. So fingers crossed we can keep the momentum going today and tomorrow. But uh, on the Friday, it starts with the 130, which is the Triumph Hurdle, um, a group one over two miles. The obvious place to start is the talking horse for most of the winter, which is Sir Eric uh, for uh, Joseph O'Brien. Mark Walsh taking the ride, two from two. What I liked is Tiger Tap Tap was highly thought of by the Mullins Yard, and he got up and beat him late on close home but when they reopposed again uh, Sir Eric absolutely slammed him and the way he travels is amazing I like the fact that they haven't changed the tack from this with the uh, they've been the triumph all along and amazingly they had the long time favorite for it which was Fakir Duderi and then McManus got it and that was the one that was rerouted to the Supreme which says a lot that this has been a long-term target and it's impossible to oppose him for me Cal Destan's interesting for Paul Nichols, a very hardy battler. Five from six over hurdles, including a group one. Um, the one thing that worries me here is, have they got to the bottom of him? He's already had six runs this season. And I like, especially in trying someone who might come on a bit. But I think he is a really solid bet for a place. Tiger Tap Taps in again. Mullins and Walsh uh, was a close second, but then slammed by Sir Eric last time. Um, and yeah, it, again, he's against some real top class horses here. So whether he's got a more improvement to come forward, I really question it. What it interests a bit for me is Gardens of Babylon, because this is Joseph O'Brien's also runner, same colours, but Barry Geraghty takes the ride, which is a bit strange for me that he's not riding Sir Eric. So that's making me suggest there's some type of like arrangement with Walsh to ride that horse, I thinking rather than Barry Geraghty picking Gardens of Babylon. But he's gone to Babylon in his own right as a good horse. Two from three over hurdles. But he already has six lengths to make up on the favourite. And the favourite's got a lot more growth in him, I think. So hard to see him reversing the form. Uh, people who follow my WhatsApp service know I love Cursibly. Absolute great horse. I, well, I think anyway. He's classy. But the worry I've got is for a race like this is Chief Justice, who he's had some real ding-dong battles with, totally let the form down yesterday. And Curse Sublime as well scoped badly only three weeks ago. So he hasn't had uh, the best preparation, which puts me off. Henderson's got a couple in here. Ad Jolly was favourite for this race for a while after a really blistering start to the career. Uh, and is quite closely matched with Cal Destan, to be honest with you, on some uh, known form. But over course and distance was really, really poor behind Fakir Duderi latest. And that really does concern me. Pentland Hills has got all the progression in the world. Very, very impressive debut when he slammed an odds-on horse of Gary Moore's into second. However, that Gary Moore horse, um, I think it was called the Flying Sofa, turned up in the Supreme and came 13th of 16. So that form is nothing to get excited about, to be honest with you. Uh, Paul Nichols has actually got another big price horse in here, who I think is the type you need for a triumph. And that is Pick de Orny. Uh, he's yet to run in the in the UK, but he's switched to Paul Nichols, been given time to adapt. He's got placed horse uh, form in France, and he goes on soft going. And Paul Nichols, some quite often with the Fred Winter, will send this a big horse from France straight there, and it does very well. And I think he might end up trying to do something similar in the Triumph today. But it's all about Sir Eric. You can't really oppose him on known form. Um, and I'm taking him for the win. One, two, three, Sir Eric from Kel Destan and Pick de Orny. The 210 is a race I hate. I hate the county hurdle. It's so hard to win. Uh, Whiskey Sour is currently the 9-2 to two favourite for Mullins and Walsh. Um, he's got bits and bobs of form. He's done well uh, on the flat, even as far back as Royal Ascot last year. But he's been on the go for a long time. He was only third in this last year off 10 stone 13. And is another £5 to carry here. And I think he's plenty short enough at that price. Capitan is interesting for Paul Nichols because he seems to be going for this over the Martin Pipe, which I did fancy that for um, in the last. Um, he's had back surgery, which kept him off for a long time. But each run, 
Um, he's got better and better and better. The problem I've got with him is though all known form is right-handed and left-handed he has disappointed. Got to mention Mohayed because he won this last year and he's been in decent form this season. Uh, even won a big handicap at Ascot the week before Christmas. But he's got one stone four more this year and that is a hell of... You think Whiskey Sour's got extra? That's just staggering and I think that's got to anchor him. Uh, also, honourable mention for Eckler de Bofo. Um, for Gordon Elliott, decent handicap debut last time and could be anything. Whether he's up for a cut and thrust of a massive field like County Hurdle at this stage, I'm not 100% sure, and that's slightly tempered it. Which brings me to my 1 2 3. Um, in there is Mr. Adjudicator, Willie Mullins's other runner, um, because he came second in the Triumph last year, and quite often I think once they've got the run under the belt, Comes back a year later, uh, seems to know the game a bit more. I think he's on a decent handicap mark, and his only run he's had this year, Mr. Adjudicator, was second to Espoir de Alain, the now winner of the champion hurdle by a record margin. Seems to have been kept fresh. He runs well fresh, and I think Mr. Adjudicator's got a very good chance. One who should have a chance here is Monsieur Le Kirk. Um, I actually tipped this up again on Saturday for the Imperial Cup. And I've got to be honest, nothing against it. Lizzie Kelly didn't ride at the last minute. And her brother, I think it was James Kelly or someone, rode. And he got it totally wrong. Two out. The winner made a mistake. He was just sitting there double handful and didn't go for it till after the last. And then the horse that made a mistake had been getting pushed and pushed and pushed and run it down close home. Glad to say Lizzie Kelly's riding this time. And as long as this race doesn't come too soon i think monsieur lecoeur could do very well prominent racer as well and i think that helps in a field like this but from a winner i'm actually going to the harry skelton yard who's becoming a bit of a handicapped maestro i think at the moment and that horse is chitabello very good second at entry in december uh he's got good course form uh, he's never necessarily won the course, but he runs well here. The second entry reads well. He's had wind surgery, and I think that is going to see him getting home a bit better. 11 stone 5 is a nice weight. He formerly won a Scottish champion hurdle, so he's clearly a very good horse. And I'm taking Chittabello to go um, and get off the mark um, in this handicap here. Always competitive, but 1, 2, 3. Chittabello from Mr. Adjudicator and um, Monsieur Le Kirk. 250 is the Albert Bartlett, and I really, really fancy Commander of Fleet here for Gordon Elliott. His only bad run came when the owners did something mildly crazy, or the connections, and after running really well and getting on top close home over two mile five, they had the brainwave to drop it back to two miles, which I just totally don't understand. Uh, he was up there throughout, just got hopelessly outpaced, trundled in four for four, but then... His group one win in latest, he decided what they should have done the last time. Let's up him to three mile, one in a group one, heavily on top, close home. He is all stamina, this horse. Wouldn't surprise me if he even looked in a bit of trouble here and just kept finding, kept finding, kept finding. I just hope they don't do what they did with Battle Over Doyen, though, Jiggins Town. Battle Over Doyen had always been prominent, battling at the end. Yet when it run yesterday in um, the Ballymore, I think it was, they had this brilliant idea of let's hold it up at the back and it just never suited and he dropped away so i hope they race him prominently i hope they make use of his stamina and if they do he will take all the beach uh, all the beating birchdale for nicky henderson had been favorite for this race and has been favorite for a long long time he's unbeaten um he won over the course um at cheltenham at two mile four back in january on trials day but brewing up a court uh, brewing up a storm was really pushing him that day and that one only ran average yesterday, didn't fully get home. And Bruin Upper Storm would have pushed this one very, very close. Plus, Birchdale has got another three furlongs, four furlongs to contend with here. And I don't know if he'll fully see it out. He very well might, but I'm not convinced. JP McManus owns Birchdale, and he also owns uh, another one trained by Nicky Henderson in here, which I fancy slightly more than Birchdale, and that is Dicky Diver. Very close second to the current favourite, which is Lis, Lis Naga Oscar on debut, and very, very easy winner latest. Now, Lis Naga Oscar had already had 
uh, a benefit of runs. So had that little bit more street cred about him, really, to get it done. But he had clearly come on a lot. Dicky Divers jumping was a lot slicker the latest. And he has all the potential in the world. And I think he's going to run into a place here, Dicky Diver, at least uh, in this Albert Bartlett. Just mentioned the favourite, which is Liss Nagger Oscar. Two for five, only over hurdles. Uh, he was an easy winner um, of a tr of one of the hay trials for this race at Haydock latest, but the softer ground would be a concern. He's better on better ground, that's for certain. Alaho for Willie Mullins and Ruby Walsh is in here. Um, came fourth in a bumper at the start of the season, uh, and it wasn't a surprise to see him stepped up in trip, but it was actually a big surprise to see him stepped up from a bumper where he came fourth straight into a group three, three miler for a hurdles debut, which was a strange maneuver, but it worked and he won very well. He's another one, though. I don't think he wants it too soft. And by the looks of it, rain is coming tonight at Cheltenham, even though they're on the new course the next two days, it still could be very cut up by then. Rhinestone, you've got to mention if you're Mender in command of commander of the fleet. Joseph O'Brien, Mark Walsh rides, second to commander of the fleet, as I said. Uh, so you've got to give him a chance. But what worries me is the back form was nothing special. And uh, it could have just been a one-off. He was hopelessly beaten by commander of the fleet. Um, but, you know, it, it could have been a one-off. And that does worry me. It's a really good race, this Albert Bartlett. But from one, two, three, commander of fleet from Dickey Diver and Birchdale. Which now takes us to the feature of the festival, the feature of day four. And that, of course, is the Cheltenham Gold Cup, Group 1 over 3 Mile 2. And what a renewal we've got here with these first three in the market in particular. Clanders Oboe has been all the rage since he won um, the King George. He came fourth in a Betfair before then, won the King George, won the Denman Chase, but it was an egg and spoon Denman Chase for me, a little four-horse race. He's run well, but it's never excelled at Cheltenham and that really really worries me to be honest with you and plus it's a lot different between winning a King George and a Denman to go into a Cheltenham with the hill three mile two Paul Nichols knows how to get it done the likes of Corto Star the likes of Denman he can get the job done see more business going back even further so it's one of them if he was around like the 10 12 to 1 I would say each way but at the current prices Clanders Obo is not for me to mention the other ones as well, which don't quite make the top three, but need a mention. Ken Boy. I love Ken Boy for Willie Mullins. Absolutely gorgeous horse to look at. And if you picked a horse on looks, you'd pick Ken Boy. He's in great form, but again, never run to the top of his ability at this course. And that is a worry. Mike Bite was like the favourite for last year. And it's amazing that he's 16 to 1 now. But it's understandable. He's just gone his, his head's gone, I don't know, and we know we tried to run out of the RSA two years ago, he had a horrible experience, uh, he made a load of mistakes, and the, Nicky Henderson said he just did not enjoy himself in the bet for Chaser Haydock, they then sent him to the King Jaw, uh, to the King George, again, it just didn't happen, and on all known form, I don't think even Nicky Henderson can get this one back, to be honest with you at the moment, Thistle Crack, what a horse he was back in the uh, back in the day. Had multiple injuries though. He's eleven now. He looks potential book for a place, but I think the opportunity for him to win a gold cup has gone sadly. Album photo fell in the RSA last year, but what worries me is he's another one with a mind of his own. Then run out some weird incident at um, Punchestown, um, and I think I think he's better over two mile five. I wish he had gone for the Ryanair. I think three mile two is the type to completely stretch album photo as well. Bristol Demai can just harvest that bet for Chase every year. Got brought down too early to know what would have happened in the King George. But he's got some course form, but he's better elsewhere. I think he's best at Haydock, but he's worth an honourable mention. Elegant to step gape, you've got to mention as well, because he won a Welsh National. And a couple of years ago, uh, Native River did the Welsh National, tried to do the Gold Cup double got placed uh he stays well this one but i think he needs even more extreme trips than even the likes of native river brings us on to our one two three though and for third place i am going for willie mullins and i'm going for bells hill came third in the rsa uh two years ago and for me since then he came fifth obviously in i think it was the irish national and he looks to be more of a stayer now than he was in those rsa days when he was campaigned over further and stepped up to three i think they've realized now he is an out and out stayer 
in the make um, in the making. And he's the right age, the right profile for a gold cup, and I think he's gonna run a great race. Book for second, and I have just been tossing and turning between these two all like week. But for the winner, I'm going with presenting Percy because I said it a year ago when he won the RSA and people messaged me and I said, that's a Gold Cup winner in the future and I've got to stick to it. But you can't take anything away from Native River. The ground's come right for it. He's the reigning champ. He come third, second in the Betfair, third in the King George where the course would have been totally against him. Uh, missed his intended run in the Denman chase. Because if you remember, it was cancelled because of the equine flu outbreak. And then he didn't go in it again after that. That is, but it's not slightly worrying because they gave him a lighter campaign of two runs and then a run here last year. Uh, he's been kept fresh. And I think, given the season that it is, I think a fresh horse is what you need. But there's no horse fresher as it would be than presenting Percy. It, this horse is all class. He's a bit of an enigma, but all class. He travels so strongly. He goes on any ground. He won the per temps handicap over three mile. He then came back and walked the RSA last year in an absolute canter. He, as I said, he goes on any ground. Missed a load of engagement because he doesn't want fast ground. But he, even though he goes on it, they said they don't want to run him in it. He's only had one run, which was in a group two hurdle over three mile. And he won that as well which is just amazing really for him to do uh the one thing i think he needs is a pace to aim at and native river is going to ensure he's got that pace and then when it comes to the home turn and um, if everything goes to plan i think he'll still be swinging i think native river will be there native river out battled mike bites as it was last year who i thought i even said was a, a slight stamina out over through mile two which proved um right but I don't think that's the case for presenting Percy. I think presenting Percy is going to be a Grand National horse one day. And I think they'll send Native River the Grand National one day. But I think if presenting Percy is going to win a Gold Cup, this is his year he's going to do it. It's hard to retain your Gold Cup as well. No horse has done it um, since Best Mate, though obviously Corto Star regained. But I'd, I love presenting Percy and I'm sticking with him. So one, two, three for the Cheltenham Gold Cup is presenting Percy from Native River and Bells Hill. It then moves on to the 410, which is the Fox Hunter Chase, class two, two mile three, which is effectively um, the Amateur Riders Gold Cup. And again, I hope it's a lot better than it was on uh, Tuesday. Stand Up and Fight is the favorite here, but I'm not a, I'm not for backing this one. He's a, got decent form in Hunter Chases and point to points, but his loss at two to five on his last run, which should have been the deal, is not ideal and he didn't jump great and that worries me the one that could be anything in here is hazel hill 13 out of 14 in point to points and hunter chases he's a strong traveler he obviously knows how to win but he's never been up against this class of horse but could easily be good enough i, I honestly don't know and i don't think anybody knows and i think that's why he's not like even money because 13 from 14 is crazy and that worries me i like tried and tested form Shantu Flyer as well, good Cheltenham form, two for three this year, though the winning form that he had with, I think it was Mr. Mercurial, has been completely let down, and that does worry me a little bit as well. Honourable mention has to be to Pasha de Polder, who was making, I believe from what Paul Nichols said, his last ever race in this Fox Hunter. So he's going out in the race where he's run the last two renewals. He usually needs his comeback run. But his comeback run was a lot worse than his other comeback runs, which makes me th feel like the light may be fading at 12 uh, years old. And the fact that Paul Nichols said he is going to retire maybe suggests he thinks it is. Which brings us on to the top three. And in third place, I'm putting in this year, the other Nichols horse, Cad de Burley. Fifth last year, when he didn't, for me, he didn't seem to fully stay, stay the trip. But I think the jockey made a move too early. Watch the replay. Coming down the hill, he made a move and went like 10th, 9th, 8th, 7th, 6th, 5th, 4th and jumped, turned in in about 4th, challenging for 3rd and then didn't get in, but he was cruising. I've got a feeling they, I've got a feeling he doesn't fully see the trip out, but I think they might hold on to him with a bit more restraint this year. And if he does that, I can see him maybe being outstayed, but having enough to finish in the 3. Road to Rome, I'm putting him for second place. Unbeaten Hunter Chaser, potential pace at angle. Sam Whaley Cohen rides it, uh, which in these amateur races is a big tip in itself. 
Um, the reality is, I've got, and I wouldn't put anyone off backing it. I just think there's a class horse in here. And that horse is Uccello Conti, ridden as well by Jody Codd. Already got a couple on the board these first two uh, days. Uh, unbeaten in hunter chases and point to points this season. So that's good that he's unbeaten. He's clearly got the knack for it. He unseated in the national last year when unseating, um, he was going so well and he unseated, I think it was four out. Two years ago, he came fourth in a Grand National. He's a very classy horse who's taken to Hunter Chasing. And there's two things that I think you need in this race, other than luck, of course, is a bit of class and an aptitude for Hunter Chasers. And Yacello Conti has shown both. One, two, three in this then. Yacello Conti from Road to Rome and Cad de Berle. I'm a bit, one thing I would say is, as an off note, I'm a bit disappointed they bolted the order of the festival, how the festival finishes this year, with an amateur rider's Hunter Chase the grand annual massive cavalry charge handicap and then a the conditional jockeys. I'd like to finish with a flourish in that one, but they haven't done it, which it's a bit sad. It's a bit like an entry. The worst day's racing is actually grand national day, but it's the busiest day, but Hey ho, well, who am I to complain? We would have had four amazing days. So there we go. The grand annual then is a group three, two mile chase and is always a very hard race to predict. Magic Saint is the fly in the ointment here. Only five for Paul Nichols. Paul Nichols has an amazing record in this race. Beat Gino Trail, who I adore and are tipped up, and I am tipping him up again to finish in the three last year, um, has a nine pound weight pull to concede to him for only beating him three and a half, about three, three and a half lengths, but he's only five. And why I think Gino Trail is running up to his very best at five years old, I think Magic Saint has something more to come on since then. Gino Trail, what is the not love to what is the not to love about a horse who goes out on front, wears his heart on his sleeve, usually jumps like a stag, and is a previous course and distance winner? Nothing, and that's what he's had. Um, he's on the same mark as when he came second last year, and he's had wind surgery and now two runs back, which should have put him bang on. I think the last run he was bang on, but just bumped into a good one in Magic Saints. But he has got everything to like, Gino Trail, and at a huge price again at 25 to 1. What's the not to like about having a few quid each way on that? Nicky Henderson runs What's Wrong With You, which is uh, interesting, novice in here. Um, he's won well. But has made loads of errors, but won well in lesser races. The chances are he's improved. The chances are with experience he will jump better. But in a massive field like this, it's not one for me to be taking six to one on, to be honest with you. La Prezienne, Paul Nichols again, won this last year, but has been in no form since. Some horses do come back. I remember Next Sensation won one year, I think it was. Then did absolutely nothing forever and then came back and did a really good effort and got placed again the year after. Le Prezien may do it, but on known form this year, not for me. Honourable mention for one who could run huge at 40 to 1 is Forrest Beham um, for Brian Ellison. Was once a grade 2 winning chaser and was thought to be Arkle Prospect, one to go right to the top. But he's been woefully out of form and needs to show more for me. But he's a type, if someone's going to suddenly find improvement, it could be him. One who I think is going to get the frame here because I know he's a shrewdy for handicaps and he's a good one for a long-term plan. And that is uh, Dr. Richard Newland's Cad Delan, um, owned for Foxtrot Racing, a syndicate who are doing really, really well at the moment. Won a big handicap in November, very well. Uh, went up a load in the weights, but then kept off since. And the trainer even said, I might keep him fresh um, for Cheltenham and Aintree. So he is the type, I think, who will try and do the grand annual red rum chase double. And while I think he might fall short, while I think he might fall short, I think he could certainly run into a place. One, two, three, then Magic Saint from Gino Trail and Cad Delan. Which brings us sadly to race 28, the final day race of the final day of the festival. This year, it's the Martin Pipe conditional jockeys hurdle class two over two mile four. Um, but I think I'm hoping to finish with a bang here with one of my most fancied bets of the week, which is Dallas to pick on for Gordon Elliott. And it, the form even got franked even more than when I fancied it. So I would suggest uh, this could go off very, very short price. Um, one over two and a half and three mile this season. So the intermediate trip's fine. And he's got stamina, which is great. And his second that he had to City Island, beaten two lengths, has been completely franked as that one went and won the Ballymore. 11 stone five here. Good um, mailer, I think, is the jockey. 
Uh, very good uh, conditional rider. Nothing not to like about Dallas de Picton. Early doors, Joseph O'Brien um, actually came third in this last year when not seemingly getting up the hill and is two pound higher again. He's only had two runs this year, both in Group 1 company, and was battered by Apple's Jade on both occasions by 25 and 26 lengths. Um, I, yeah, this is obviously a lot lower class, and he came third last year, but he's a bit higher in the weights. And getting beaten that far, you don't know one if his confidence is damaged or two if you know he's just not up to the quality of this. You don't know, and that worries me about taking a short price on him. Uh, Deffy Blur is interesting for Gordon Elliott as well. Um, in good form until last run, um, and when he really, really badly bombed out. But then I look back on the form, and it's the last three years from February onwards, run poorly. And that worries me. Is he more of a winter horse, Deffy Blur? And that would worry me on this one. Pim is a big price for Nicky Henderson. Based on his course and distance, second to Cool Anley in a Group 3. The only worry that I've got is that horse, since that run, hasn't won, been turned over at short price, and has really let the form down. Um, so while I can see him running well, it's going to be uh, possibly not enough to make the frame. Willie Mullins runs Get A Reason here, and I like this one. I think this will fill the frame. Uh, run OK. OK to good. Some of them were good. Some of them were only OK. But it was at listed and group level this season. And first run at a handicap, well, you know, in this type of race, 11 stone five. Um, I think it's a great mark. And where early doors as running group races have been battered, this has been running group and listed and not getting battered, which makes me think it's got slightly the edge over early doors in terms of filling a place for me. The other one I am doing to fill the places is a massive price at 22 to 1 for me. And that is Daybreak Boy, Henry de Bromhead, and a, a conditional rider who I have followed in Ireland this season and made a lot of money off him, actually. And that is Donald McKinnery. Um, and he is a very, very good rider. Uh, last time out, completely wasn't up. Uh, sorry, two runs ago to Group 1 level, miles out class, not a problem there. But he An eye-catching winner later where he travelled brilliant again like he did in the group one when they just all happened a bit fast at the end but he traveled through the race took it up and powered away strong traveler henry de bromhead had a very similar profile horse in a plutar on day one which won and at 22 to 1 i can see this horse certainly running into the top three with a lot of bookies paying top five and six on this race as well there's nothing to stop you um searching out a bit of value uh but uh, it's a strong fancy to finish on dallas de picton and fingers crossed, we finish the festival with a bang. So that's the 5.30, Martin Pipe Hurdle, 1, 2, 3, Dallas de Picton from Get A Reason and Daybreak Boy. As always, everyone, thank you so much for watching over all four days. I hope, you, we've, hope you've learned something. I hope it's been useful. I hope you've backed some winners. As always, please let us know, um, you know, what you're doing, um, how you found everything. And uh, yeah. Until next year, see you guys again. Cheers.